As we all know, on 7th October 2014, the gaming world shall be rocked by the release of Alien Isolation. Now, I wanted to initially do a celebratory Alien Month for this particular game, but due to extenuating circumstances, I am unable to do so. Instead, we're going to compact a whole month's worth of quality content into one video. Now, before we get into the game we're going to be reviewing today, let's first take a look at Alien. Now, Alien is by far one of my favorite films, probably my fourth favorite film. The first being Moonrise Kingdom, the second being Aliens, and the third, of course, being Pacific Rim. Now, Aliens gave us a lot of great ideas, you know, space marines, mech suits, although that had been done prior to that, but not to this scale. You know, let's face it, that gutting power loader looked real. And hell, that fight between the Queen and the power loader was probably one of the most awesome things ever put to film until Pacific Rim. And also, let's not forget that Aliens taught us to always keep a shotgun handy for close encounters. But what exactly did Alien do? Now, Alien came out in 1979. Now, you gotta get yourself into the mindset of somebody from 1979. Alien was really something groundbreaking. Now, probably the thing that it broke the most ground on was gender relations. Now, I'm not gonna get into the whole concept of feminism or anything like that. But what Alien showed was that women could fight alongside men. That was a groundbreaking concept for 1979. Never before did you have a heroine like Ripley. And really, that was probably one of the greatest things that Alien gave us. And unfortunately, I have to say, that kind of trumps Close Encounters. Now, there have been many games released based upon the Alien slash Aliens franchise. And today, we're going to take a look at the very first Alien game ever released. Alien 4, the Atari 2600. Now, 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 don't judge the game by the graphics or the sound. I know that seems a little strange, but you got to remember, this is a game from 1982. At the time, this didn't look that bad. And at the time, this could actually have been seen as, well, kind of good. Now, you got to remember, in 1982, Atari 2600 was, you know, pretty much the pinnacle of gaming. Sure, the PC gaming master race was getting its legs under it, but really, if you wanted gaming, you went for Atari. Why? Because it had some of the best controls, and while its graphics may not have been superior to something like the ColecoVision or the Intellivision, it was still probably the best you were going to get. And this game is actually pretty good both graphically and control-wise. Now, you have to remember that in 1982, one of the most popular games was still Pac-Man. So, like today, they went with what was one of the most popular styles of gameplay, the maze game. And you also have to remember that back then graphics had to be more imagined than seen. Now essentially what we're looking at in this game is the duct scene from Alien. Essentially it's where Tom Skerritt's character Dallas went into the ducts to try to fight the Xenomorph. And that's also why I'm rocking this awesome beard mustache combo is because it's sort of a send up to his character and totally, totally not an excuse for not shaving for this review. Now anyway, if you remember that scene... Yeah, I mean, this scene is a lot like Pac-Man, especially towards the end where Tom Scare is trying to get out of the darkened maze whilst trying to escape from the Xenomorph who's kind of like a ghost. Well, not, not really, he's not at all like a ghost. Wait, oh yeah, I know! We could say, like, the Xenomorph is trying to ghost him, you know? Ghost him, kind of like in, uh, you know, the Chronicles of Riddick series, where, like, Riddick says he ghosts people by killing them. Okay, fine, maybe this only is a liberal definition of the word Pac-Man here, but it does kind of work with the thing... Okay, fine, moving on. In the game, you're playing as Tom Skerritt's character, Dallas. Even though you look more like Isaac Clarke. Not really sure why that is. I can only assume some sort of time travel was involved. Now, the Xenomorphs in the game also don't look like, well, Xenomorphs. Instead, they look kind of like Necromorphs. Hmm. 
I'm kind of wondering something here. What if somebody from the future went back into the past and they tried to rip off Dead Space in the future and instead repackage it as an alien game? Anyway, in the game, you do exactly like Pac-Man does in his game. You collect these dots. I'm gonna guess they're what? Peanut butter M&Ms that the crew left because they wanted to be dicks to Dallas? You can pick up power pellets like in Pac-Man and then by touching a xenomorph it makes it go back to timeout I guess. I don't know why there's three xenomorphs, all of these weird colors. I don't know anything. All I know is that in this game you can at least tell who you are and at least you have a goal as to what you're doing. Which is a lot better than a great many Atari 2600 games. This is actually a game. Then, if you're a great little space captain, you can progress to... Uh... Frogger? Stage? I guess? Now, 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 I know what you're thinking. I was thinking, that, that's totally a rip-off of Frogger, but with, with xenomorphs and not cars. And you'd be right. You'd be right on that. But, this actually shows a great use for the xenomorph. They might be thinking, oh, we'll use them as shock troops, right? And that'll work, because they'll go out and kill all the humans. Well, no, because you can't really, really use Xenomorphs better than you could, like, a tank, or artillery, or orbital bombardments. No, what the company probably really wanted to use the Xenomorph for was... Trucking! I mean, why would you want to install, you know, like, a robot to drive a truck when you could install a Xenomorph? It doesn't have to eat, it doesn't have to sleep, and it doesn't excrete anything. So you don't have to be cleaning up the truck. Besides, I mean, robots? What the fuck are you doing robots? It's a xenomorph, it looks cool. So yeah, that, that's, that's what the company wants to use a xenomorph for, just truck drivers. I mean, it makes sense, you know? So yeah, you then got this stage where you got xenomorphs driving invisible trucks and you have to try to thread the needle through them to get this indescribable object. And if you fuck up just once, you go back to the maze stage. Yeah. Oh wait, I can also say that in the maze stage you can get an extra thousand points for collecting these objects of some description. By Crom, I don't really know what these things are. I'm gonna guess they're like magical objects of great justiceness. Now, here's the thing. To a modern person, such as myself, this game, it's kinda lackluster. But if we take a look at it from a 1980s perspective, it's not that bad. Really, it does kind of get across the concept of alien. You are isolated in things that are kind of like vents. And, I mean, well, there's no scene that's comparable to this Frogger stage. Okay, look, let's face it this way. Remember E.T.? The game that everybody says is the worst game ever made? Compare that to this. This is God compared to E.T. And you know what? That doesn't make me feel too bad, because at least one of my favorite series of all time got a great first installment, even if it was on the Atari 2600. And you know what? The very first time you actually play this game, you can kind of have a little bit of fun with it. Now, the only reason why I even discovered this game's existence was I was going to do it for a live stream. In fact, I still am. And when I was practicing for the live stream, I actually found that this game was, well, kind of fun. It is kind of fun during the May stage. And, you know, if you play the game for about, oh, five minutes, you might have a lot of fun. Any time over that, and well, your brain shuts down, and well, you die. I only came back to life because Yzmir likes me and wants me to torture myself with more Atari 2600 games. But anyway, now if the gameplay wasn't boring enough, and it is, this music is by far some of the best music I've ever heard, said I as I was being held at gunpoint by a xenomorph who wanted me to love this game. Okay, let's face it, the music, if you can call it that, which you can't, is just the same note played over and over again on a goddamn motherfucking slide whistle. That's it, just wee 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 And it drums in your head the entire fucking time. That is just sad. Now see, here's the thing. 
I don't really get why you have the slide whistle going over and over again. It makes no bloody sense. It, I would have thought that it would take less time to program no sound, which actually would have been, well, not scary, but at least not mind-numbingly annoying, than having this slide whistle play over and over and over and over again. This has got to be some of the worst sounds in a game I've ever bloody well heard. All told, this is not a bad game. Especially for a licensed game on the Atari 2600. And let me leave you with a very, very scary thought. This game encapsulates more or less what Alien was supposed to be, way better than Predator on the NES encapsulated what Predator was supposed to be. Remember the pink Arnie shirt? Yeah, in this game, at least Dallas kinda looks cool in his Isaac Clark outfit. Now I was going to go ahead and you know, have a 1980s version of me review the game with a 1980s mindset, but I felt it hurt this review's pacing and timing, and so I thought I would just rush to the end. Because we wouldn't want any establishing character building moments, would we? Now, this scene was, of course, filmed, and you guys can see it 20 odd years from now when I release the Alien on the Atari 2600 review director's cut. But until then, this is General Arts wishing you good alien isolation and good alien online or whatever makes you happy.